Hello everyone, welcome to T Show. It's a show where we discuss an important part of history. Today, we'll be discussing about the origin of computers. Let's first observe how computers impact our daily activity. Now, let's move on to our main topic. Let's take a look at the video we've prepared for you guys. Hello. Huh? Are you talking to us? Hmm, well, yeah. What do you expect? I'm a screen. Well, fine then. I guess this show will become a talking discussion. So, shall we begin? Yes, my good sir. Okay, now, simple question. What is a computer? Well, in terms, a computer is a technology that enables us to carry out calculations, both mathematically and logically. Examples of these so-called computer systems might range from being an often used daily gadgets, such as, such as PCs, laptops, smartphones, to our transportation units. Due to recent technological advancements, we as individuals have begun to use computer more often compared to when the first computing machine was introduced in 1822. Hmm. Now, that's a brief explanation of a computer. Now, as time moves on, how did, how did this computer change our life? Well, at first, you see, computers were merely a simple calculator. It started out in the 1300s BC with the Chinese abacus or Xuan Pan. It can do basic calculations such as addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication, which is performed on a biquinary system, which is a two base five system, which technically can also do both five and base ten calculation. Later, further in times, the difference engine was created and it became the very first mechanical computer. It also contained an ALU, which is an arithmetic logic unit, a basic flow control, and some punch cards, and integrated memory, but sadly its function is still as a calculator, which is, well, it just is used for basic calculation. A few decades later, during the era of the wars, came the idea of programmability through the invention of Z1 by a German named Konrad Zeus which becomes a machine that was very programmable, even though it has its limitation. The machine then becomes the very first step towards the creation of modern computers. Following the Z1 came the Turing machine made by Alan Turing in 1936. This machine can emulate a person following a series of logical instructions. It became the foundational theory of computing and computers. However, the advancement did not stop there. During the same era, a man by the name of Tommy Flowers invented the Colossus. Following the creation of the previous computers, it has the same job, but this time it can decode encrypted messages. It then became the very first electrical programmable computers. I see. So, what happened after the Great Wars? Well, after the war usually comes peace. During that era, digital computers were created. There is still doubt about who created the first working digital computer, but for now let's focus on the given information. The first digital computer was made by a professor, John Finson Anatasov and Cliff Berry, which is also referred to as an ABC, Anatasov Berry Computer. It is an electrical computer that used more than 300 vacuum tubes for digital computation, including a binary math and Boolean logic, and had no CPU. Due to that, the unreliability of this creation, a new creation was introduced to the world. Hmm, I bet this new creation got more vacuum tubes. You bet, you're right. The new creation, which was the first functional digital computer, had around 18,000 vacuum tubes, which is 60 times more than the previous ones. This machine was invented by the ENIAC with 
J. Presper Eckert and John Markley leading the invention. It was very humongous compared to the ones that were made before it. It's 1800 square feet area and 167 square meters. Wow, that's a great information. But let's take a break for now. Very well. We'll come back after these short messages. Hello everyone, we're back with a new co-host. In the previous session, we've talked about the first digital computer, the ABC and the ENIAC which has vacuum tubes. Now, let's continue our discussion. Um, okay. Uh, improving the previously awesome creation, the first computer to electronically store and execute a program was created. It was called the SSEM a small-scale experimental machine, also known as the baby or Manchester baby. Wow, a baby. Yes, a baby. It was made around the 1948, which was designed by Frederick Williams and was then built by Tom Kilburn. Its usage is to find the highest proper factor of an integer using repeated subtraction instead of divisions. The second stored program computer is called the EDSAC, built and designed by Maurice Wilkes. It became the first computer to run a graphical computer game OXO, an implementation of tic-tac-toe which was displayed on a 6-inch cathode ray tube screen. At the same time, a computer named Manchester Mark I was made and the result being it becoming able to run machine primes for 9 hours without error, which is an impressive feat at that era. Mm, so. In this era, computers started to be a scientific tool. Yes, and that was the turning point for the computer era as people are starting to become interested with computers. In 1950, the Univac 1101 or ERA 1101 is invented and is the first computer capable of storing and running program from a memory. Five years after that came the Whirlwind machine, the first computer with RAM. It uses magnetic core RAM and real-time graphics. After that came the first transistorized computer in 1956. Following that invention came the first mini computer. In 1960, Digital Equipment Corporation released the first of many PDP computers, the PDP-1. Hmm, mini computer. How mini is this? Hmm, well, it's about the size of a wardrobe. Ah, very mini indeed. Hmm, okay, let's continue. In 1974 came the first workstation, the Xeros Alto. This computer was revolutionary for its time and included a fully functional computer, display, and mouse. The computer operated like many computers today, utilizing windows, menus, and icons as an interface to its operating system. Hmm, hey, you know what? I forgot something. In 1971, Intel introduced the Intel 4004, the first microprocessor. Ah, Intel. Hmm, yes. Shortly after that came the first microcomputer, microcomputer, developed in 1973. It used the Intel 8008 processor. So, computers are getting smaller and smaller. Hmm, yes, and portable too. The IBM 5100 was made in 1975 and is the first portable computer. It had a full-size keyboard but equipped with only a 5-inch CRT display. Not only that, it weighed around 55 pounds. From this point onward, computers start to be accessible for everyone. Gaming console became a thing when Atari made the first Atari VCS game console. MS-DOS became widely spread with IBM PC and computers got smaller and smaller until now. And now, we even have handheld computer that we use every day and there's even cloud computing available. I guess this ends the show for today. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next show.